In the year 2000, the Fuji Research Institute conducted a poll asking people what they felt was Japan's greatest invention of the 20th century. And the people overwhelmingly answered, instant noodles. And nothing else even came close. So, do, nishin, cup noodle. Nishin's many brands of instant ramen, including cup noodles and top ramen, have kept many a broke college student fed. But where did this time-saving and wallet-saving meal come from? Today on Weird History Food, we're boiling up the history of cup noodles. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Food channel. And let us know in the comments below what other microwave staples you would like to hear about. Okay? Time to use your noodle. In 1932, at the age of 22, Taiwanese businessman Wu Baifu opened up his very own textile company. Just a year later, he headed to Osaka, Japan, where he changed his name to Momofuku Ando and set up shops selling knitted goods while he attended the renowned Ritsumeikan University. His business was a quick success, and he soon started to dabble in a variety of other enterprises, from prefabricated housing to the production of both charcoal and salt. But as the story goes, with the start and finish of the Second World War, Japan was left in a state of devastating poverty. And after a two-year stint in prison for tax evasion, which began in 1948, Momofuku was left destitute as well. His businesses gradually shuttered, and he was left with nothing but his house, and presumably all the Momofuku jerseys he ordered from the NBA Pro Shop. At the time, the Japanese government, with the help of their American occupiers, were continuing their wartime rationing program, and both inefficiency and corruption were leading to widespread hunger and black market pop-ups. So as Momofuku wandered his way out of prison and off into the early 1950s, he noticed that long lines of starving people would wait out in freezing temperatures just for a chance to taste some hot black market ramen. Momofuku claims that this sight got him to thinking. Homemade ramen took too long for poor working people to make on their own. What if he could create a just add water alternative that would revolutionize the way Japanese people prepared one of their favorite meals? There would be no more long lines, no more standing out in the cold, and no more hungry freshmen in future college dorms. He spent a few years chewing on this idea, but in 1957, at the lowest point of his financial life, he decided to turn his idea into a reality. Momofuku went into the workshed behind his house, and he got to work. He apparently had no experience of his own with noodle making, though. It would be like one of your friends suddenly deciding to create a noodle empire in their garage. He was truly starting from the ground up. One fateful night, seeing the way his wife fried up their tempura dinner by using piping hot oil, he decided to try the technique out on his noodles. The high heat seemed to zap the moisture right out of them. At long last, after about a year of constant trial and error, Momofuku had finally figured out a way to dehydrate his ramen. We hope he tried putting the noodles in a little headband and sweats first. He then developed his very first flavor profile, and in 1958, Momofuku was ready to send his chicken ramen to stores across Japan. Far from helping to feed Japan's poor, freezing working people, Momofuku's instant ramen was considered a luxury item at first. At 35 yen a pop, each serving of Momofuku's instant ramen costs about six times as much as it would to make from scratch. That's not saving anyone any dough. Still, his instant ramen was an instant success. It was simple and fast to make, and it could be stored for far longer than traditional noodles. Within its first year on the market, his newfound company, Nishin Food, was selling 10,000 portions each and every day. Today, Nishin claims the product's initial success was due to the growing number of two-income households in Japan. The country was in a period of rapid growth, and with the emergence of a suburban middle class came Japan's first-ever American-style supermarkets, which contain a plethora of processed and prepackaged foods for Japanese people to enjoy for the first time ever. Here's a tip, stay away from the Captain Crunch. Your gums will thank you later. Instant ramen only became more popular with time. And by the mid-1960s, Nishin looked to expand into other countries outside of Japan. While touring the United States as a potential new market, Momofuku noticed a recurring trend at every corporate office he visited. According to legend, the staff at each of these offices would be given their sample of instant noodles in disposable cups. When they were done eating, they would simply throw the cups into the garbage. The idea of single-use containers was foreign to Momofuku, 
but he decided he had to embrace America's fast-paced, maximum-convenience, dumpster-friendly culture if he wanted to make it big in the States. So he headed back to Japan and had a team of the world's top noodle scientists generate almost 40 different prototypes for a new type of instant ramen, one that could be made straight from a disposable cup. They eventually settled on a lightweight polystyrene version, one that would better insulate the heat of the noodles than any paper-based counterparts. And by September of 1971, cup noodles were ready to change the way we ramen forever. Believe it or not, cup noodles were a hard sell in Japan at first. At the time, a cup of cup noodles cost four times as much as a package of instant ramen. That better be some cup. What's more, standing while eating was seen as rude in Japan. And the on-the-go format of cup noodles didn't really strike a chord with Japanese consumers. So Nishin quickly called an audible. Rather than simply selling their cup noodles in supermarkets, they produced around 20,000 cup noodles vending machines, which dispensed hot water on the spot like a coffee machine. So customers could enjoy cup noodles right then and there, wherever they were. They placed these machines in pedestrian zones and areas that catered to young people. And when sales were good, just one of these 20,000 units could sell as many as 20,000 cups of ramen on any given day. That's enough styrofoam to hold every last one of Captain Planet's tears. Your polluting powers combined, I am Captain Pollution! <laughs> Still, cup noodles didn't really take off in Japan until one fateful 10-day period in February of 1972. The Asama Sanso incident was a hostage situation in which Japanese police stood off with five Marxist radicals in a remote mountain lodge. The police on the scene needed to be fed, and cup noodles became their go-to food of choice, because it allowed them to scarf down some calories without having to leave the standoff. And because everyone in the country was glued to their televisions watching the situation unfold, they all saw the officers going to town on cup after cup of instant ramen. The brand became an immediate household name. According to some historians, the incident marked the beginning of the end for Marxist movements across Japan. But from those Marxist ashes rose cup noodles, ready for a social revolution all their own. Just two years later, cup noodles would reach America, where they were briefly marketed as cupo noodles. Yeah, don't worry, you didn't Mandela affect yourself. It really was called cupo noodles. Remember, nobody noodles like cupo noodles from Nissan. Nishin then set up plants in Hong Kong, Brazil, the Netherlands, Germany, Singapore, and Thailand, creating a global empire before the end of the 1970s. Over the many decades since Nishin's instant ramen and cup noodles hit the market, they've released dozens of flavors and have inspired oodles of competitors. They've been a hit all around the world, and likewise, almost every country seems to have its own particular brand of instant ramen. Koreans have Nong Shim, Singaporeans have Prima Taste, the Vietnamese have Vina Ace Book, and the Americans have their Japanese imported Maru Chan. Even Tapatio's gotten in on the cup noodles trend, releasing their very own picante lineup of instant noodles for those looking for a Japanese-Mexican mashup. Likewise, over in Japan, Pringles tried to get in on the action too, releasing their very own sour cream and onion and jalapeno and onion flavors back in 2018. But even with all these pretenders to the throne, Nishin remains the top brand of instant ramen in the world to this day. In fact, cup noodles performed so well in America that Nishin eventually invested in a 60-foot cup noodle sign near the top of New York City's one Times Square building that stayed there for 10 years. Billboards usually don't stay up for that long unless something terrible has happened. Every year between 1996 and 2006, millions of people watched as the New Year's Eve ball dropped in Times Square, right in front of a great big cup of Momofuku's noodles. It was a pretty good idea. What's more, between cup noodles and their top ramen brand, Nishin alone has more than enough flavors to go around. Cup noodles come in original seafood curry and a wide variety of specialized stir-fry flavors, including General Zhao's chicken, Korean spicy beef, and sweet chili. Less popular flavors include burnt styrofoam and sh it's leaking. For those looking to get a bit more adventurous this holiday season, Cup Noodles also has their seasonal pumpkin spice cup noodles, which they recommend topping with whipped cream. Although, that sounds more like a dare. Meanwhile, Top Ramen is still slinging their chicken-flavored instant ramen all across the planet, alongside beef, shrimp, soy sauce, and chili varieties. In the new millennium, instant ramen has continued to grow bigger and better than ever before. 
You'd need a cup the size of a water tower to hold its success. While anyone can appreciate low cost and easy prep, cup noodles and top ramen gained particular prominence among college students looking to make a meal with just a couple of cents and a microwave oven. Despite this popularity, many nutritionists have raised concerns over instant ramen's apparent lack of nutritional value. Because when people like something, it's the nutritionist's job to ruin it for everyone. While these ramen often contain low amounts of iron, niacin, and riboflavin, they don't really offer up much else. Likewise, they are super high in salt content, with one single package often providing over three quarters of the recommended sodium intake for a single day, or roughly the same amount of salt that collects at the bottom of every McDonald's bag. Instant ramen also often contains TBHQ, the preservative that has been shown in lab settings to damage DNA. But when's the last time you used your DNA for anything? Today, over 100 billion packs of instant ramen are sold around the globe each year. China is its top consumer, followed by Indonesia and Vietnam. Of the other top 10 instant ramen consumers, the USA and Brazil are the only non-Asian countries among them. We're really into microwave noodles in the States. For those looking to pay tribute to the brand that powered countless exam weeks, the Cup Noodles Museum in Yokohama, Japan has got you covered. Exhibitions range from the Instant Noodles History Cube, a room displaying all of Cup Noodles' many different packages throughout the years, to a more hands-on ramen-making experience, wherein visitors get to knead, steam, and season ramen for themselves. Hmm, I wonder if you have to bring your own microwave. The museum also has a recreation of Momofuku's original work shed, along with a 58-meter panoramic timeline that details his entire life story from start to finish. Though he passed away in 2007, he still had one last invention up his sleeve during his final years. In 2005, at the age of 91, he declared his company would develop a brand of ramen for outer space. He headed a project team to make his space noodle dream happen, and by creating a thicker ramen broth and noodles that were bite-sized rather than long and tangly, they did just that. Momofuku's space rom headed up into space shortly thereafter, making it aboard 2005's Discovery Shuttle, where astronaut Soichi Noguchi became the first human to eat ramen noodles in space. Now, if we could only get one of those vending machines up there. So what do you think? What's your favorite ramen flavor? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other weird history food videos.